We're back on Leading Edge with Dr. Nicole Kayla Fuse, Bowling Green State University, talking about uh, partisan politics and just where we are following, you know, Virginia one year after we elected Joe Biden president. Republicans have maintained a lot of unity. All right, some defections on the infrastructure bill, notwithstanding, while the Democrats have put their intra party squabbles on the evening news. Is that just part of Democrats or are they blowing it or your thoughts on that? I don't know if I'd say they're blowing it. Um, I think they're definitely, I don't know if they're necessarily less unified, but they're less vote, like verbally unified. So the there's disagreement and they're not afraid to have policy debate. And there's far less punishment for policy debate among the Democratic Party. Whereas the Republican Party puts forth the view of a more unified front and there is clear uh, punishment, I would say, from the party in terms of threats to committee assignments for oh, yeah. anything that even looks like you're supporting um, a bill that was proposed by a Democrat. Did and you so, hear the hue and cry for those Republican House members, the handful mm -hmm. of them such as they were who voted for infrastructure, when something like 18 or 19 Republican senators over in the big chamber over there had voted in favor of it? Um, I want to go back to the Virginia election for a moment, because the Republican candidate, Glenn Youngkin, as we said earlier, really walked the tightrope. He ran strong on education and parental rights. And I bring this up because we've talked about this on this program. For some, that says critical race theory. And as you know, school board meetings around this country have become ground zero for some heated, even threatening confrontations, much of it based on misinformation. You work in education. You're married to a high school teacher. What's going on out there from your point of view? As far as in the classrooms, it's completely normal. They teach to the state standards. Um, as it has been for a very long time. Um, they teach to the standards of the AP test and the college board as it has been for a very long time. What's changed is the amount of misinformation that exists about what schools are actually doing. And that misinformation has then fueled some of these hostile school board meetings that I'm sure everyone has seen all over the different news sources out there where people are angry about something that isn't actually happening and that doesn't exist. And because there's no way to prove a negative, um, it becomes the school, the schools end up kind of on the defensive trying to prove that something doesn't exist, which yeah. is almost impossible to do uh, because it doesn't exist. Wow. Um, and so you end up with policies being proposed that impact uh, kind of what teachers teach and what teachers are exposed to in some states. Uh, we haven't seen as much of that here as other states, but we are seeing it in Ohio as yeah, well. Um, and it's, it, it's kind of changing the nature of, of what happens in the classroom because teachers, I think, are becoming aware that this discussion is out there, but that they're not doing anything that they're essentially being told that they're doing. And so it kind of puts districts um, and local elected officials, which are traditionally nonpartisan, right? These are nonpartisan positions in a really weird position from what they've been in in the past. Yeah. Uh, in a, I, really, I'm less than a minute here. Will Joe Biden run again? Short answer. We'll have to wait and see. That's an unsatisfying answer, but I don't know. You're saying um, he's enough of a politician. You told me this, that if he reads the tea leaves and knows that he's going to lead his party to defeat, he would step aside. W he's Donald, a politician. He knows what to do. Will Donald Trump run again? He is going to keep us waiting. He is not going to declare until the last possible second. And there's good reason for that. Threat. Yep. He has the threat um, of running again and it changes campaign finance. So he can keep bringing in donations. He can bring in a ton of money. And until he declares himself as a candidate, he doesn't really have to follow all those campaign finance rules. There we go. Dr. Nicole Caleb Hughes, thank you for spending time with us. It's been too long. I know we'll do this in, in the midterm election year coming up. Excellent. And to all of you, thank you for being with us again. Have a great week ahead. We'll see you next week.